Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us for our Beef Brunch News Update on Tuesday, December 21st. We've made it to the end of the year. It's finally Christmas week. And if I get any dates wrong this time, it's going to be okay because Christmas is coming and we're all gearing up for the holidays. Um, so with that, I think the last time that we left um, the news update, we were talking about a lack of rain. I know we've gotten a little bit. Um, today, it feels like Christmas. It's been cold, but it looks like we're probably going to be in the 80s and having a true Southern Christmas by the time Christmas Eve and Christmas Day actually gets here. Uh, Lee is on, with us. He's on the phone um, somewhere out in northwest Louisiana, but I'm still trying to figure out exactly where that is um, or where he is. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Lee, for our updates for the northwest part of the state. Uh, thank you, Ashley. Glad to be with y'all here today. Um, I'm actually in South Bossier Parish. I think most everybody knows where that is, but uh, uh, certainly glad to be with y'all. Glad that it's uh, the holiday time has come. Uh, Christmas is always such a, a good time of the year to spend with family and kind of refocusing on what matters most there. Um, Ashley's right. We did receive some very, very much appreciated rain uh, in, in our corner of the state. The, the amounts are widely varying. I've heard folks saying a half an inch all the way up to a little over an inch in certain locations. Uh, just anything uh what was much appreciated uh any amount of rainfall truly especially those folks that's got some rye grass or or other winter forages planted and and they were really struggling i i looked at some pastures that were really in a bad way as far as moisture went leading up to this event so we got that and as ashley stated the temperatures have been uh so such a wide fluctuation you know we've set multiple record highs um, out of the Shreveport uh, National Weather Service office, I think at least two or three days have been either tied or, or broken records. Uh, one day in particular, I believe we broke the record high by like four or five degrees. So that's that's pretty significant. Um, and, and as Ashley stated today, currently it's around hovering around the 40 degree mark. It actually uh, sleeted on us a little bit this morning. Uh, early this morning up towards the hill farm way uh, that's just Louisiana weather for you I guess and 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 with that I, I've talked to several folks that run some stalker caves and um, they're seeing some of those respiratory illnesses that we generally associate with that weather pattern uh, of early to mid fall you know in in this part of the country whenever you get into those uh, warm days and cool nights, uh, you'll start seeing those respiratory uh, illnesses popping up on these cattle, and especially on these recently weaned calves or lighter calves, they can really wreak havoc. And I've talked to several producers there that uh, ha have, have had some problems that they usually don't have by this time of the year. Most time by this time of the year, that's kind of ebbing a little bit, if, if you will. So just want to uh, recommend everybody to kind of check up and we always talk about planning this time of year and uh, herd health is such an important topic and I think we've we've got some webinars on that as well but uh, get with your vet you know talk with one of us we'll try to get you some information as to as to a health plan try to avoid some of these uh, respiratory illnesses that that these cattle can run into of course there's nothing you can do really on, on these uh, on, on these sale barn calves that a lot of the producers buy, but uh, with your own cattle and, uh, and and so on and so forth, you can really take some preventative measures to do that. Uh, market, uh, I'm sure Jason will, will cover this. Vince will probably allude to it too in his section. But as far as market markets go, things have kind of settled down. I guess I, I hate to say turned down a little, but they've settled down a little bit in the last week or two. Uh, talk to a guy that buys a lot of calves uh, out of several sale barns in, in, in the Arklatex region uh, just the other day and and kind of we were talking about these prices and, and these good cattle are still bringing relatively good money uh, but I think I stated this in a news update a while back the disparity between these plainer lighter type calves and then the, the, the sure enough good cattle it is still rampant. I mean, I've never seen it at, at such a level, uh, price disparity on the, on these classes of cattle before. 
uh, saw, uh, I'm not going to say a rush, but there were a lot of producers that sought to unload some calves if they had happened to have some wean calves or some, some bigger type calves uh, uh, over the last few weeks, maybe months since Thanksgiving with these prices steadily creeping up. There's a lot of anticipation leading into what's going to happen after the first of the year when it comes to these calf and yearling prices. And of course, as Jason states over and over, a lot of it takes lead, uh, the, these calf and yearling prices take their lead from uh, some of these uh, futures prices and what's going on farther down the, the cattle pipeline, if you will. Um, with that being said, you know, a lot of hay being fed, folks or cattle are in pretty good condition for this time of the year and and just looking forward to Christmas and the New Year's and I want to take this time as I wrap up to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's to everyone and, and look forward to visiting with y'all in uh, 2022. Thank you Lee. Vince, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you for our central region please sir. You're still muted. Vince. Vince, we've made it this whole year without anybody talking while they're muted, but your mic's still muted, man. Sorry. 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 <laughs> That's why Jason was laughing. So, uh, yeah, Lee's held up by a train. I was held up by a train just a little while ago getting to the office to get on the air with you guys. But yeah, it's been a good year in respect to what we faced last year, I would say um it, it's you know things have been somewhat better um uh, but as far as the cattle uh, and livestock industry you know uh, people are gritting their teeth with you know grinning and bearing it but buying thousand dollar urea right now so it's it's tough uh but you know we we've been in a better situation than uh, we have been as far as rainfall lee alluded to y'all got you know inch to inch and a half in areas uh we had uh, roughly two and a half inches about 10 days ago and then another inch and a half on Saturday. So we're in really, really good shape in the central part of the state as far as our winter pastures have really turned on, uh, responding to the nitrogen applications. Um, I'm seeing an extended forecast of, of some snow and some ice uh, for the central part of the state come January 3rd or 4th. The local stations haven't alluded to that, but um, we certainly don't need it. We had a struggle getting to where we are with our winter pastures and, and getting them where they're grazable. Uh, there are a lot of cattle that have been turned out on ryegrass in the last three to five days, I would say, in, in you know, going across the countryside. Um, cattle are definitely needed. Sat in the local sale barn here on Tuesday last week. Um, there's a lot of thin cattle coming through the barn. Some of the sale barn workers, guys that, that are actually cattle producers, are telling me that, you know, these uh, folks that had 20, 30, 40, 50 head of cattle are selling out. You know, they just can't sustain the high input cost and, and the doing business the way we are. Um, so it's it's a little unnerving to know what we're faced with come the first of the year or after the year. Uh, some some folks are saying we're going to have an uptick in in calf prices, uh, which is very much uh, we need we need to get on more of a level playing field with our input uh, costs. So hopefully hopefully that comes to light. But um, as Lee alluded to, that you know the better cattle are still selling good, uh, but there's a lot of thin plain cattle out there that are. Um, either have uh, parasite issues or uh, sick from some pneumonia, you know, sitting in the barn. Uh, there, there's a lot of cattle that don't look very healthy. Uh, so uh, with that being said, you know, people are well into their hay stocks, you know, as we were dry going into this last two weeks. But uh, we, we've seen a, a really good turnaround as far as our, our ryegrass plantings and those who have wheat planted. There's a lot of clover coming. Uh, again, as Lee alluded, we had record breaking temperatures. Last week, 83, 84 degrees with a big south wind um, and, you know, several inches of rain uh, ahead of that. So, man, things really, really took off and greened up. So even even Bermuda pastures, I mean, at four or five inches of growth in my Bermuda fields at home, it's it's amazing how much that stuff turned on. Uh, so here we are, you know, we just had rain today, uh, just a sprinkling rain, but it's cold. It's in the mid 40s right now. It was 30 something this morning, going to be 30 through tonight. Uh, but we're going to rebound into some warmer temperatures uh, between now and through the you know the holiday the uh, week of the holidays between Christmas and New Year. So, with that said, you know it's it's kind of mundane. People are still kind of hunting some last minute bulls down that that you know may need a a bull here or there. But um, 
you know, the breeding season is about to kick off. Uh, fall calving, you know, winter calving is, is, is pretty much done as far as fall calving. We're, we're calving winter calving or early spring calving cows now. So uh, there's a lot of newborn calves on the ground. Uh, so with this change in weather, as Lee alluded to, also uh, this pneumonia issue, a lot of calves that, that don't look very healthy out in the pasture. So it's important that we, we stay up on those and uh, get them get them what they need as it, as it comes because uh, we're seeing some with scours and uh, just, just having diarrhea and um, not real healthy, kind of going through that transition as we spoke of uh, two weeks ago. It's, it's an expensive transition from summer and fall into winter, uh, the cost of doing business and, and uh, illness in our cattle herd. So um, I'm going to close with that and Hopefully we have uh, a son, somewhat of a good weather situation going forward. We certainly don't need that ice and snow that that long rain forecast I saw earlier today. Um, hopefully that's not the case because we actually have ryegrass falling over that needs to be grazed and we'll never get to it if that comes to light with several inches of snow in South Louisiana. Thank you. And I'm going to come in, I'm going to emphasize a couple of things that Lee and Vince have said before I turn it over to Jason. Um, you know, they both mentioned hay, they've mentioned um, these calves and cows having a hard time, and Vince was just talking about the transition with the cows. You know, we've got some calving, we've got some that we're getting ready to breed, just depending on on what season, uh, management season, you've got your cattle in. But, um, you know, they both alluded to nutrition, and um, yes, the vaccinations, and yes, uh, medications and everything else are extremely important, but if you don't have that nutritional background in there, um, then you're going to be spending even more money on medications and things like that, trying to get those cows in there. So I think Jason has said it a couple of times, you know, you can um, you can cut costs certain ways, but you don't want to cut corners. And I think Lee and Vince have, have probably both said this a couple of times that you can't starve a profit out of a cow. And so um, just make sure that you are thinking, thinking forward into that, the long range forecast, like Vince said, um, I know the holidays are great and they're wonderful, but um, I come from a family where we realize that sometimes we don't get to go on trips or one family member doesn't get to go on a trip because they've got to stay back to feed because the weather gets bad um, for whatever reason. And so just be thinking about that. As Lee mentioned, it's it's the time of year to plan forward and um, be thinking about that and um, the best way to do that over the next few weeks and even the next few months. So, Jason, I'll get off of that soapbox and I'll let you go ahead and talk our northeast region and our markets, please. All right, thank you, ma'am. Uh, had the opportunity to spend a good bit of the week last week over towards the Mississippi River, and um, and, and there's only one way to wrap it up, y'all. It's dry. Um, the uh, if you look at the the most recent uh, drought monitor, um, on some of the worst drought in the state is over there in that northeast corner of the state, and um, uh, riding over there and seeing some of our pastures over that direction, it's a uh, it it is extremely dry. I mean, uh, some places received about an inch, maybe a little bit more. Most places, what I heard this past week, about a half inch. Uh, which I mean, that's that's not going to get us out of a drought. I mean, it certainly helps. It keeps stuff alive in terms of our cool season forages. But it's uh it's definitely not going to get us out of the drought that we're in right now. Um, and I'll touch on a little bit more as I get done. I've got a few closing thoughts that I wanted to leave us with for the end of the year and. Um, I'll visit about drought a little bit more in just a second. Uh, the past week concluded with the softer prices and a slaughter, slightly smaller slaughter volume. Uh, so if we compare that to the previous week, we were down about 11,000 head in total federally inspected slaughter. Uh, packers were content to kind of sit out the week. They didn't make a whole lot of purchases this past week. Uh, the two upcoming weeks of abbreviated slaughter um, will um, will put some inventory back in the feedlots and it'll um, and some of those cattle that would normally be moving uh, in a normal slaughter week uh, will be sitting still until we get out of the holiday lull and uh, and they'll be moving so through some of that inventory again and the box beef complex the choice cutout moved four dollars and 72 cents lower uh, to 262 dollars and three cents with a choice select spread of twelve dollars and seventy seven cents uh, so uh, we're still uh, above average on our choice prices uh, our spread has come back uh, pretty much in line but we're still running uh, above average for those choice cuts uh, uh, go to the grocery store and, and buy some of those choice meats and you'll you'll see pretty quick that they are still 
um, a little bit high. In this week's Fed cattle market, slight trade occurred in the north from mainly 136 to 138, which is about two to four dollars lower compared to the previous week. Uh, light volumes in the south at 136 to 138 also, which is again two to four dollars softer. In the five area feeding region, negotiated cash sales range from 134 to 138 on a confirmed 38,851 head. Uh, so compared to the previous week, that's down about 17,000 head. Uh, stated before, the next week will be a relatively inactive week for both futures and cash trades uh, with, uh, with Christmas falling at the end of the week. Uh, futures, price, futures prices fail as cash prices fail to recover. Uh, so we didn't have a whole lot of recovery this week in our in our cash and uh, the futures reflected that as well. So the futures ended the week on our fat cattle with February trading down 62 cents at 136.42, April down 35 cents at 140.60 and June down 50 cents at 136.05. Uh, so we um, we suspect that there will be continued weakness into January until we do uh, work past some of the holiday slowdowns and the slaughter pace. Five to six hundred pound steers, medium and large ones and twos, sold from 163.83 to 167.41, uh, which is nine dollars higher to five dollars lower when we compare that to the previous week. Um, I, I don't know if Lee is still on here with us, but uh, so if you look at uh, what Lee mentioned on uh, those, I guess if you want to call them value added cattle. We'll let that go by. <laughs> well, and you're looking at about 20 cent per pound uh, differences between some of those value added cattle and just our planer type cattle that uh, uh, no bells and whistles. So uh, take, a, take a five weight, um, a, a good value added five weight calf is uh, like a dollar 82. Uh, and then just our uh, planer cattle, no bells and whistles are gonna be down there around a dollar 64. So uh, nearly 20 cents a pound difference in, in some of those higher end cattle. Seven to eight hundred pound feeder steers, medium and large ones and twos, sold from 138.36 to 154.59, uh, which is steady to three dollars lower than the previous week. Uh, futures ended the week with January trading down two dollars and thirty-two cents at 160.25, March down two dollars and sixty-two cents at 161.70, and April down two dollars and forty cents at 164.87. Uh, so if you look at that compared to what uh, on our last visit, those feeders are off about five dollars a hundred uh, compared to when we visited last time uh, in terms of the futures market. Uh, lean coal cows averaged uh, 54 cents a pound, which is about two cents higher when we compare that to the previous week. And uh, and I'll mention something about coal cows again here in just a minute. As we move into our feed stuff, soybean meal is trading up $28.20 at 40540. Soybean hulls are steady at 155. Cotton seed meal is down $7.50 a ton at 30750. Whole cotton seed is steady at $260 a ton. Rice bran is steady at $195 a ton. Corn gluten feed is steady, I'm sorry, is up $25 a ton at $670 a ton. DDGs are up $2.50 at $175 a ton. And corn is up $0.05 cents a bushel at $6.08 a bushel. So I said I had a few closing thoughts real quick uh, that I wanted to just um, um, leave with you all, if you don't mind, Ashley. So if we... If we look at what the uh, what most of the expectations are, and I'll use one of Lee's terms in terms of uh, all of this is going to be dependent on: Do we have any more black swan events? Uh, do we have any more shutdowns relative to coronavirus? Uh, we see across the country in some of the larger areas and some of the other states, we're already seeing some shutdowns taking place. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of uncertainty out there still uh, in, in relative to these markets, but if you base it on current elementary fundamentals, basic supply and demand, 
uh, we should see some significant improvement in all cattle markets um, uh, into the spring of 2022. Um, and everything is lining up for us to see some, some really good prices. Uh, some of those things that we're talking about, uh, the beef cow herd has been declining since 2019. We saw an increased rate of decline in 2021. And by all accounts, what we're seeing from our USDA reports is it will continue to decline into 2022 and possibly even into 2023. Uh, so I told you I was going to mention something about, uh, about drought. So I think um, if you look at the U.S. drought monitor, if we continue to see that, uh, that major drought continuing to grow uh, out of the Midwest and into the plains, uh, I think that we'll continue to see a higher volume of, of cows being slaughtered. Uh, so the latest cow slaughter report for the most recent period, like 7% higher uh, compared to last year uh, in terms of our cow slaughter. Uh, and I think we can, we can certainly uh, chalk a lot of that up to drought. Uh, also, some of the things that Vince is talking about, these higher input prices, fertilizer, feedstuffs. Um, and one of the one of the quickest ways and um, most common ways that folks start cutting back is is they they get rid of some of those cold cows some of those cows that maybe not be the highest performing most efficient and they start uh, they start pushing those into the cold cow market uh, and i think that'll uh, uh, that that's definitely going to play a big factor if that drought continues to grow in terms of what our u.s cow herd numbers look like uh, feedlots are current. The supply of market-ready cattle is adequate uh, currently, which is a good thing. Uh, dressed weights are running about average. Uh, there is extremely strong domestic beef demand. Um, consumers still want our product, and they apparently are willing to pay for our product. And that, I think that speaks volume to the quality of cattle that we are putting into the consumer's uh grocery store sales and on the restaurant plates um they like the product we're producing and that uh, hats off to all of our cattlemen everywhere uh for being able to produce that high quality uh red meat um that the consumers want to purchase uh, even with higher prices we really hadn't seen a really big decrease in consumer demand if you look at uh, per capita consumption of beef Going into 2022, they're only estimating like a two pound uh, uh, per capita reduction in red meat, which is not a major reduction in per capita consumption. Um, and if you look at poultry and pork, both of those are expected to go way up, especially poultry. Uh, and if you look at what's taking place in the poultry markets right now across the country, you can see that they're preparing for that. Um, there's also uh, a lot of demand right now for beef internationally um, and with the continued drought in Australia. Uh, they had the non-typical BSE outbreak or a BSE positive in Brazil. Uh, China shut the doors of uh, that time to Brazilian uh, beef um, and whenever they can't get beef from Brazil, they look to the United States for that red meat. So uh, that helped bolster our international markets a little bit. Uh, so some questions that I think we, we've got to stay on top of and we've got to continue to monitor as we go into 2022 um, is what are our hay supplies going to look like in the later part of 2022 due to drought and fertilizer prices. Um, and folks are going to cut back on fertilizer. I mean, that's and most most will have no choice but to cut back on the amount of fertilizer that they put out. Well, fertilizer is directly going to affect yields. Uh, so uh, what is our hay supply going to look at because of those two things, drought and fertilizer prices? Um, uh, what are feedstuff prices going to continue to do? I mean, we saw six dollar uh, a bushel corn for the first time since June. Uh, we had gotten down uh, in, a, in a reasonable price, I think, for corn, and now we're back up over $6 a bushel again. So what are these feed stuff, feed stuff prices going to continue to do? And just general inflation of other inputs, uh, fuel, equipment, uh, not just fertilizer. I mean, uh, there's there's inflation of a lot of these inputs across the board that uh, that are directly affecting the profitability uh, of our beef cattlemen. So I think that these higher input prices 
um, we'll test the efficiency of a lot of our guys. Um, and, and unfortunately, just like Vince mentioned that, uh, that he had heard, um, that, uh, some of these smaller cattlemen are selling out and that's unfortunate. I mean, we, we like, we like, uh, helping those folks just as much as we do anybody. I mean, they, they deserve just as much help, but in order for them to, uh, to continue to spread out cost over 20 or 30 head, um, it's easier for those guys with larger, the more cattle you have, the more you can spread that cost out over those cattle uh, and it helps them remain a little bit more sustainable. So my heart goes out to, uh, to those folks. I know it's a, uh, it's a, it's a bittersweet time for some of them. Uh, they've been in the cattle business a long time and, uh, I know that's a, that is a bittersweet feeling to, uh, uh to know that you've got to do that. So. Uh, with that, I'll say Merry Christmas. I uh, hope everybody gets to spend some time with family. Uh, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next go-round. Thank you. And just to wrap up a couple of things, so um, our next news update is going to be on Tuesday, January 11th. So it'll be a few weeks um, over the holiday break, and then we'll be back with you all again Tuesday, January 11th. Um, before we're back with you, I do want to mention one um, event that we have coming up for our central region, um, Alexandria area, surrounding area um, guys. We have our second annual LSU Ag Center Central Region Crops and Cattle Forum. Um, it's going to be at the State Evacuation Shelter. That's going to be on Thursday, January 6th. Uh, registration starts at 745 and then um, opening comments will begin um, at 820. First presentation following that 8:30, and then we go until noon. Um, this is a chance to renew uh, your private pesticide applicator, um, get recertified for that. There's a mix of talks between crops and cattle, of course, um, as the title goes. But um, in terms of beef cattle, um, Dr. Strahan um, will be coming in and talking weed control for pastures and hay meadows, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about using uh, implants in suckling and growing calves. And then I think Dr. Scaglia may come in with a talk as well or join me on that one. Um, and so we'll have those in terms of beef cattle. Um, we do have them advertised on our social media pages and I send out the remind. But if you want the full agenda, if you want any information, um, feel free to email me and I can send that to you. Um, Justin Dufour is our um, agent that is coordinating this. And so I can uh, send you his information too if you have further questions. But um, I don't mind forwarding that, that agenda to you if you want that. And so, um, as all the guys have said, I will wrap up by saying we hope that you have um, a great holiday season, that you get to spend time with your family. Um, I know if some of you, like my family, we didn't get to see everybody last year due to the pandemic and everything else. So I hope that you're getting to see family members and spend time with them. And um, we just wish you all a very blessed um, Christmas and holidays and Happy New Year. <laughs>